Глубоко уважаемые члены. Distinguished chair, dear colleagues, in my presentation I would like to share with you our experience. That is the experience of the institute named after Raisa Gorbachev on enteral nutrition and the way we overcome anorexia in patients with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Of course, I will use the, you know, shortened version that is just transplantation. So transplantation is one of the most effective and state-of-the-art methods of treatment of oncohematological diseases, a number of solid tumors and hereditary diseases. And this method that is based on the high dose uh, chemo radiation therapy which is uh, then accompanied with intravenous administration of the patients or donors hemopoietic stem cells uh, several weeks after the graft is uh, uh, kind of adapted and to the complete donors chimerism, chimerism will be the case in an ideal case, and then the monitoring of the mini minimum residual disease so that we prevent the recurrence of the disease. If there are some negative prognostic factors, then we should do the maintenance chemotherapy or infusion of the donor's leukocytes. Patients who are gi given uh, transplantation of bone marrow, or they belong to a high group of high risk of malnutrition. And uh, depending on the type of transplantation, practically up to 95% of patients do suffer from malnutrition of a varying degree. Unfortunately, this is a typical habit of our patients with cachexia due to gastrointestinal toxicity, also anorexia, uh, vomiting, nausea, vomiting, mucositis of the GI tract, and uh, uh, this, of course, uh, can lead to immunologic diseases such as acute GVHD uh, of intestine. As a result of this, the malabsorption syndrome develops, and this leads to inf infection and again graft versus host disease. And uh, so uh, the main objective of our study was uh, to increase efficacy of the nutrition support in patients with bone marrow transplantation. And secondary objective was to evaluate enteral feeding role and uh, develop uh, different steps uh, for gut recovery in cases of graft versus host disease of intestine of grade four. Well, we had 143 patients in our study, the median age 11.5 years, and uh, mostly those patients with acute leukemia, 65%, also patients with solid tumors, aplastic anemia, and congenital diseases. So we made use practically of all met modern methods of transplantation, uh, mostly allogenic, non-relative, and haploidentical. As for the patients, we have uh, assessed nutritive status using anthropometric indicators, dynamometry in uh, older children, uh, by, um, you know, laboratory data, albumin, protein, and uh, uh, bioimpedance analysis was done. In case of diarrhea, we have studied uh, bioptates histologically of the mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract and different methods of correcting the insufficient nutrition. And of course, all these data have been processed statistically. All patients on uh, transplantation are given special diet, which is low bacterial, which is sparing, which is lactose-free, gluten-free, and yeast-free. And uh, during this study, we saw that in 75% of patients, we had insufficient nutrition. In 64%, we saw anorexia quite pronounced. In 25%, the maldigestion syndrome as a result of mucositis as a rule. And in 15 more percent of cases, we saw malabsorption. Due to all this first line nutritive therapy was given, which included uh, low microbial diet, sipping or enteral nutrition. And in 18% of cases, we used nutrition support using parenteral nutrition. 
and the efficacy of this therapy was observed in 39 percent of cases. And here I mean that is controlling the further progression of this insufficient nutrition stabilization of the BMI and laboratory data, and also control and resolvement of the diarrhea syndrome. And a second line therapy was given since the first line therapy did not solve the problem. So we had stimu appetite stimulants, 40% of patients. That was second line therapy. And we used med absorb acetate to avoid uh, adverse events uh, associated with this agent. Also, the pancreatic enzymes were used and semi-elemental or anti-inflammatory mixtures enterally. Efficacy of this scheme, uh, uh, you know, took care of 69% of our patients. This group was divided into several subgroups, patients with just appetite stimulators, also patients who had additionally isocaloric uh, mixture for sipping, and uh, patients with malabsorption syndrome, they were prescribed semi-elemental mixtures. In all groups, we saw increased appetites, uh, growing BMI, and uh, better quality of life. As for the low efficacy of the therapy in the third group is due to the fact that these children were in critical somatic status due to the pronounced diarrhea and anorexia. And a special group of patients are, of course, patients with acute uh, uh, graft versus host disease of intestine grade 3, 4. For grade 3, you can see diarrhea can be even up to several liters with, even in small children, losing important you know, minerals such as zinc and copper. For grade 4, diffuse intestine bleeding can be the case, and this cannot be controlled even surgically. And Histologically, for the severe form, the glands are destroyed with nuclear, I mean, with ulcers forming, um, particularly if the vessels are involved, the situation becomes absolutely difficult. And so we have developed our model, and it was successfully used for uh, 12 patients. First step, basic immune suppression, total parental nutrition, prokinetics, if uh, there is paresis of gastrointestinal tract, induction of the local anti-inflammatory response, and uh, the enteral glutamine administration as uh, the main source of for enterocytes, so energy substrates for enterocytes. And as for the second step of this therapy, it implied addition of non-absorbable immunosuppression agents. And uh, one month later, nasogastral tube was uh, used uh, with anti-inflammatory effect. And uh, step three implied a step-by-step -step diet. I'm not going to discuss this in detail. Let me just stress that the step-by-step -step nature is important. The patient is moved to another step only if diarrhea, pain, or other syndromes are not aggravated, if they are controlled or resolved. And, uh, and hemorrhagic syndrome is also resolved or controlled. In this slide, I see different formulas which we used in that particular study the um, semi-elemental uh, mixtures, antihistamine, that's a glutamine A component, and the um, appetite stimulants. I'd like to conclude by saying that uh, magistral acetate in low dose is quite effective to overcome anorexia in patients with uh, transplantation of stem cells. Combination of semi-elemental formulas with appetite stimulants in 31% of cases proved to be effective. It resolved or improved malabsorption in patients with acute graft versus host disease and chronic form of that condition. And uh, the um, third step complex treatment based on enteral formulas, it, and it can be quite good in acute uh, graft versus host disease. I thank you for your kind attention.